This episode of Out of Spec Reviews is brought to you by Magna. More on that later. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to beautiful San Diego, California. Although technically we're just outside of San Diego. What's the name of the, na the town? Uh, Alpine. Alpine. It feels cool. We're like on top of a mountain. It's absolutely gorgeous. Actually, take a look at how beautiful the scenery is over there. Ignore the Mirai. We have other videos coming on that shortly. But what we want to do is we want to talk about these two trucks behind us, the Rivian R1T and the F-150 Power Boost, because my friend Robert actually owns both of them. They came in around the same time, and he's got to figure out which one to keep. So we're going to have a quick conversation with him, figure out his needs, and then you guys have to comment below with which truck should he sell and which one should he keep. And depending on your comments, offers are open on both of these, by the way, starting at 150 grand each. Guys, this is Robert from Nature's Lead YouTube channel. You just started a new channel. Yeah, yeah, you kind of inspired me, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into it a little bit and try to get into the whole, you know, uh, overlanding and camping and hiking and mountain bike riding. You know, I wanna actually maybe try to document some of it and, uh, and try to help some people out. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, we can't wait to follow along and certainly we'll put a link to that in the description. Great. Um, I was joking about the 150K price tag or maybe I wasn't. <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I haven't really, you know, thought it well out as far as, uh, you know, what, you know, I don't know what the market is for, you know, I know it's yeah. been crazy with the Rivian. The Rivians are just uh, ridiculous on eBay and all these other sites. Um, yeah. But it, it, it's a, it makes it a little bit more difficult, right? Making a decision. So. so what happened? How did you get? So first off, before we talk about how this happened, let's go through the trucks. Okay. So 2022? 2022, yes. F-150 Power Boost Hybrid Lariat LEDs, the good tires the whole bit take a look at the inside super duper clean does it have massaging seats no it does not that's uh that's platinum on king ranch I think, yeah king above. ranch and yeah. up uh but still super nice truck and and why did you order this truck first well i actually ordered the rivian back in 2019 right yeah Early so years ago three years ago and the guide got to me literally the, the day after the three-year anniversary of ordering the rivian <laughs> really so on the but three i was a year. diehard rivian fan i even i i still have the patch look at that from the overland expo in 2019 <laughs> that's awesome uh, so i was you know sold from march 2019 all the way till now problem was they were having these delays right so i had no idea when it would actually come and i had bought this Airstream trailer and wanted to get out there with the boys and, and have some fun and I had nothing to tow it with. So I'm like, you know what, I better get the F-150 in case they keep delaying this thing. I ordered it then last December and sure enough, they both targeted the exact same week and I could have, <laughs> I could have picked this up literally the next day. Uh, or that one the next day, but I delayed it a couple days. So I picked them up two days apart and yeah crazy so now you have two brand new awesome yes. trucks by the way what's yes. funny is we've done a towing test with these exact trucks yes exactly and which is why i reached out to you you yeah. You, you yeah you helped out a lot by going through that actually it, it it really made it a much more difficult decision for me trying to decide which one to keep yep well that's what we're here to talk about a little bit so f-150 power boost twin turbo v6 about a kilowatt hour battery pack 7.2 kilowatt onboard power yes. from the 30 at 240 volt plug yes and, and that's nice yeah you know, sorry the rivian's like uh, bumping me here like yeah. <laughs> opening and, and giving me a little nudge you join me back at the office with these incredible views to thank magna now magna is a technology company that produces not only parts for cars but also technological solutions from manufacturing and design and engineering they cover so many parts of the automotive sector and i bet you've interacted with a magna product in your life before Magna actually is very near and dear to my heart because their partnership Magna Steyr in Austria produced my first car, a Mini Countryman, and uh, it was built right there in Graz. A lot of you are also familiar, Magna is gonna be producing the Fisker Ocean in their Magna Steyr factory, and they also build G-Wagons and nothing gets tougher than a G. So really excited about our partnership with Magna, of course. They are also hiring for engineers. So we know a lot of you guys are super interested in technology and automotive. I'll leave a link below so you can learn more
more about possible opportunities at Magna, but of course we want to thank them for sponsoring today's video and being such a huge supporter of Out of Spec. Truly, they are pushing mobility forwards responsibly and sustainably. Uh, I was a little jealous talking about the Can port. you show us the power port um, in this, by the yes, way? Yes, I can. So I've got a uh, bike mat here for the... Oh, that's nice. So you can lay the bikes over yeah, top. Yeah, for the bikes over top. We actually went on a camping trip recently and it worked out really well. Uh, so here, I was just using this today uh, or yesterday to cut weeds. You can kind of still see the weed stuff in here. So here's the 7.2 kilowatt plug-in right there. Uh, that's a 30 amp. You can see that's, you know, the different types of uh, connection there. But then you have two of these, this one and this one, because they split it out into two different, you know. Um, but the 7.2 kilowatt with this, with that top one, I was able to plug in the trailer on our camping trip. And, you know, I had microwave and had, you know, air, didn't need air conditioning at that time, but I'll need it in the summer. Can you show us the trailer? Yeah, sure. So this is the use case for the truck, right? It's this Airstream. Yes, exactly. It's, and so it's a lighter weight. And this is what makes it a confounding problem is this is only 3,500, maybe 4,500 max gross yep. weight. Yep. And both of them can tow it just fine. But the problem is, uh, yeah, well, you start getting into the different issues of, you know, the, each have a different advantage. So I could plug this one right in um, with the Ford. Worked out really well. And um, so where's the cable to plug this in? Right here. Oh, there you go. Or no, I take it that's back. This is trailer that's for the trailer. Yeah. I take it back. It's over here. I don't have the cable actually plugged in. Okay. But it's, you know, it comes right here. And you wouldn't And then I have an adapter. I needed an adapter to put it into the floor, which I had, I'd seen somebody post it before. I'd tried it out. Mm -hmm. And really cheap adapter for, you know, 20, 30 bucks on Amazon was able to plug it right in. And then it's quiet, right? It's not a generator. So you're not kind of limited to those generator hours you get in the campground because you can do it, you know, it's just the, the car coming down idling, right? right? So people don't really notice. And it just does that long enough to charge the battery that's in the truck. So it was, the truck wasn't running that long. It would run for a couple minutes and then you get a long, long, long time off of the battery of the truck. Right, because what it does is it turns on the combustion engine, puts it under big load, but still at low RPM, charges the high voltage battery, the hybrid battery, yes. and then the uh, 240 volt connection is directly connected to that high voltage battery, which can then feed your trailer. Um, exactly. This is a nice trailer, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is, you know, uh, Airstreams get really expensive. So we wanted Airstream, but we couldn't be, you know, and, and the weight of the bigger ones, right? So this is kind of the lower end. However, they made this Base Camp X specifically for overlanding and off-roading. And so they raise it three inches. They give you the big full-size Wrangler tires. Yep. And this is it's the perfect overlanding kind of trailer camper to, to take with you. Yeah, if you want to see a full review of the Base Camp uh, trailer right here, Matt's RVs Towables did a great video on this. Mm. And uh, this love is, his YouTube channel. This is the 20X. The and, 20X. Uh, which is, they have a 16X and the 20X. And that, so the, that took us six, seven months to get. Is or, the or 20 longer. bigger? Uh, the it's, I think it is a little bit higher inside. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. That okay. might be a little bit and in the standing room, around, but, right? but it's basically the same. It's just a little bit different layout inside. Yes. And that's one reason, one of the reasons we got it was the kind of panoramic view all around. Yep. And then also just the resale value, you know, obviously. Yeah. And, uh, but this one is about, I think it's 50 something thousand as opposed to most Airstreams, you get up to a hundred yeah, yeah right. i was gonna say 100 plus for most airstream Sweet. towables so then you had to get a truck for it so did the yeah. truck come first or did the trailer idea come first the trailer probably you know uh it wasn't really covid driven necessarily it was really the rising prices of the hotels mm. and, and staying everywhere was driving us crazy you know, right. it's just you go so to you zion, spend 50 grand we used to spend 110 dollars <laughs> a night in a nice yep. hotel in zion now it's you know 300 a night and right. just going for five days and you're spending thousands of dollars so yeah it was a kind of alternative to that yeah but because it was during covid and everybody else was going on trailers yep it took it took probably eight, nine, ten months, something like that. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten months to get the trailer. Yeah. And the trailer weighs, you mentioned, about 35 to 45. 35 dry and yeah. then uh, 45 max. Right. Yeah. So either of these trucks can tow it without no even problem. feeling it. No problem. So because this max towing capacity on the Rivian's 11,000 pounds, 12,000 yes. on the F-150, right? Yes. Yep. Yes, exactly. And it does depend on spec, but at least the F-150 we tested was 12 max. I'm pretty sure yours is the same. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So then it comes down to capabilities, right? So you can certainly... 
get anywhere you want easily with the trailer. You know, I've towed with both, both of these trucks with trailers way heavier than this and actually was really impressed with the stability of the Rivian that obviously 835 horsepower pulls. It could pull that thing in half. I mean, yeah. if you do a launch, right. it's pretty wild. But right. then again, you you're, have such a range cut when towing with an electric truck yes. because you're under constant load and you don't have that much energy in the battery pack. A couple kilowatt or a couple gallons worth, essentially, equivalent. Yes. Where absolutely. this, you have a 30-gallon tank almost. Yes, absolutely. And... Uh, that was the one of the big issues. That's why I targeted this was not just because of the power station. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've kind of been calling it the, it's kind of the towing trilemma. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a software engineer in blockchain. That's a the trilemma is this phrase they use. It's a kind of technical thing they, they're throwing around all the time. But it reminded me of this. It's the towing trilemma for electric cars is the fact that you got to deal with the range, right? Is going to be short. And I get maybe... 100 to 150 on this, towing that. Right. Um, and I was thinking when we did that big trailer, the big Vinos, we were projecting about 95 to 100 miles right, with this. Right. And that's certainly more efficient. Yes. I would think it's lighter and has a better aero profile. Yeah. So I would say 125 to 150. That sounds about right. On highway speeds. Yes. But then you have to do a really deep charge. Yes. Yeah. And you have to time it right. You know, we had talked about this before. You have to time it right when you're arriving at the charger. You know, you'll, you'll right. never go like 5% to 95%. You're usually going to go maybe 10% to 90, right. something like well, cause that. Well, because it could take almost an hour to go from 90 yes. to 100% in this truck. Yeah. And so you're never going to charge that deep. And you really don't want to drive an electric car at very low states of charge under high load with a trailer because you could sag the pack and hit bottom voltage on a brick or on a particular portion of the battery and it could just go. Oh, off. Absolutely. And so your your usable battery full charge capacity is now, let's just say, reduced by 15% or so. Yes. Realistically, yes. I wouldn't go much below five and you're definitely not charging over 90% on a road trip. And it's not like you're really going to be going 50 miles out and 50 miles back. You're going to be going from here to Utah to Colorado exactly. where you have multiple stops. And then becomes the issue, what do you do when you get to the charging station? That's the second That's the second <laughs> aspect of it. So when I say that trilemma, it's three things, right? One is that range. The second one is you get there, and with a gas station, I can pull through on this, right? I don't have to unhook to, to gas up. Not to mention I'm only doing it once on maybe a long trip. I can, I can go to here to Zion and stop once, you know, I, I estimated. To, yep. uh, and here with this one, I'm going to do it three times. And with this one, every time I'd have to unhook the trailer you know, pull it around. You, you dealt with that difficulty when you were trying to pull in and trying and to figure out how to do it. Every station's different. Yeah. And so yeah. let's just show the viewers who may not know, the charging port on the Rivian is arguably in the best place it could be for towing. I think so. And yeah. so that means like you could essentially roll up. Oh, it's locked right now. Uh, <laughs> the cool carabiner key. Take a look at that. It's just so awesome. <laughs> and I've got the, <laughs> I got the bracelet going too. Oh, for your charge port needs a little little help here. Ah, oh, that's weird. Have, has that happened to you before? No, it hasn't. it's the first time I've seen that. Is it not going? I hear it. <laughs> what? That's weird. Yeah, I just had it. I just uh, did it the other day. We just charged it yesterday. Okay, lock. This is the first like build quality issue I've seen on a Rivian. <laughs> All right, weird. well now it's 140 instead of 100. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, interesting. Well, wow, let me uh, let me hop in and see if I can manually get open or close on the unit. Uh, this one, and it says closed charging port. Oh, there you go. So that was closed. that was perfect. I think it will open now. There we go. I think it just got a little stuck. Yeah. It got a little stage fright you know, yeah. on camera. It's his first time on camera. And so, what, yeah, I mean, it's one take, everything on out of spec. We Everything's new for the Rivian, right? <laughs> but when you roll up to a charging station, this is arguably the best place for a charger. Yes. What I wish they had done was also put one on this side of the truck. That would be cool, yeah. That would be so useful. They have the space for it. A lot of cars, e-tron and Tycon, come to mind with dual charging ports, although both of those cars only have one CCS location, one mm. DC location, and an AC on the other side. Um, the problem with the trailer is like when you roll up, you can't easily make U-turns. 
and yes. you really block a lot of the parking lot. Yes, because it sounds like from all the experiences I've been seeing out there is that I'm usually going to be at a Walmart. It sounds like for many of these long distance trips, they're the most reliable currently. Yep. And Walmart's got a lot of people in it. They got a lot of cars. So it's yep. not one of this out in the boonies places where there's all kinds of room. You're, you're, you're going into a parking lot with a lot of other cars. So, so the trick is with a trailer, my suggestion, travel through the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then you don't true. block anyone. That's true. That's a good point. And yep. you can sleep in the parking lots too, right? Yeah, Supposedly. Just, you got your house behind you. <laughs> That's so right. plug in, <laughs> wake right. up in the morning, be like, sorry to the state of Utah for holding you up in the parking That's lot. Right. <laughs> and so the third problem or, or whatever, it's not necessarily a problem, but it's it's something that I think electric cars lack, specifically Tesla and Rivian, is that they don't offer that opportunity to power things like a trailer or your house or bigger items or power tools, whatever it is. Yeah, so let's look at the ports available in okay. the Rivian into the back first. So, because this has obviously NEMA 520 outlets. This, Do you want to open? The, yeah. Uh, let's I'll let open. you open the. Do you want me to open this? Yeah. Uh, Ooh. Do the... Sounds honestly smoother than on the truck we had. Oh, really? Ours sounded a little crunchier than that. I remember early on they had problems with this, right? That was one of the things that with a lot of them they deliver. They not were... even sure if it's early on. I think it's just <laughs> all of them. And uh, I don't think a lot of times with downweight gravity, this won't come down itself. Right, because yeah. it's just on that little yeah. spring. But definitely a smaller truck than the F-150, but having them next to each other, just by the way, yeah. not that different. Especially when it opens up, right? They, they yeah. have that, that extended uh, you know, yeah. brace here, I mean, so it gives you more room here, I guess. This so. definitely has some more width yeah. and definitely a little bit more length inside of the bed. Yeah. But I think someone should make an accessory that pops up out of here, something where you can have an extension to keep the tailgate down going down the road. That would be nice. And perhaps that will come in the future, but it would be really nice just to have something bolted into here. A lot of trucks have it that folds out yes. and then you have an extended bed. Yeah. Um, but take a look at the ports in here, Alyssa, behind the camera. You can see these are just NEMA 515s, which is a maximum of 15 amps at 120 volts. The F-150's regular outlet also just has 120 volt, but also to 20 amps, they have a 520. This the, does though have the air compressor. And I used that today. We really? Had, the old car you passed on the way up in the driveway, yeah. I, I was trying to pump up the tire to get it out of the way of here, and, <laughs> and it worked pretty good. It took a little while to figure out how to use the thing, but yeah. it worked really well. Yeah, once you dial in the pressures, get yeah. it hooked up and hit play, it goes pretty good. And we filled up multiple low tires in a row, and uh, it doesn't overheat. Oh, wow, that's good. So when it comes to range, when it comes to powering stuff, that has a clear advantage. Yes. I used it yesterday to cut weeds down the driveway. Halfway down the driveway, I can't get extension cords long enough. I had the battery of my weed whacker being charged in here when it ran out, had it charging while I also had plugged in a hedge trimmer and I was working the hedge trimmer. So I could just take this with me down that long driveway and, and go along and I had my full you know, tools and everything. It, that was really nice. <laughs> yeah. Was a good experience. I mean, it's just having power is, yeah. Ford gets it, right? They yeah. understand what working customers want. It solves this need. If your house loses power, you can run a whole bunch of stuff off this right. truck. And the lightning, which is to come. The yeah. lightning. going to do the same thing. I was yeah. going to say, what about a lightning? Do you have a reservation? I do, but I the other ones, I got a reservation on all of them because I didn't know what was coming first, <laughs> right? So Cybertruck, you know, all of them, lightning, yep. everything. And I, I honestly thought the Cybertruck would beat them, you know, Everyone originally. Did. Yeah. But, uh, I have one on the Lightning, but I did that one a little late, so I probably not till next year. Okay, interesting. So, what are you gonna do now with these two trucks? We understand the solution. What what uh, what do you want our audience to say, basically? <laughs> yeah, that's up to your viewers. Actually. That's yeah. what I mean. That's one of the things will be interesting to see what people say. I I tell you, I'm on the fence. Uh, this is the this car is so much fun to drive. It's yeah. like driving a sports car down the road or something. And, and the way you always say they're shredding it. You know, when yep. you came out of the mountains and then now you're on a road and in both places you're yep. excelling. Yeah, I went from from ripping down a back road with 800 <laughs> horsepower, coming out of corners with opposite lock, to then hardcore wheeling in yeah. Moab, right, with wheels yeah. in the air it doing its four motor thing which is good not great but still like an incredibly capable truck yeah. insanely well built yes a and far superior driving experience and it's electric and so i like that we have a solar on our roof so this becomes a solar car it's a solar truck oh right? that's cool it's, how much it, how many kilowatts of solar? uh we have well we have 41 uh solar panels i'm trying to think of how much it is i, I don't remember 41 sounds like a lot it's a lot it's a lot we <laughs> sdg and e owes us money from last year and, oh, really? and we had electric car the whole year and, yep. and we still you know we're 
owed money at the end of the year is great. So this is basically for free as far as gas. So for the daily driver and everything, it's perfect. And in California, gas is like six oh, bucks a gallon. I've it seen is. it's wild. It is, yeah. So however, this is like you put a key in your couch and you're driving it down the road. It's like driving a couch down the freeway. It's the greatest. It's it's so comfy inside, right? It's yep. just it's like driving a lounge chair. And whereas this is kind of has that sporty tight feel, this feels very very comfortable and roomy inside. This is like right? the long distance monster right here. Do yeah. you get the driver assistance on this truck at all? It has some of the yes, it does. It comes with the the basic yeah yeah so it does lane centering and stuff yes, like that yes, it yeah does very cool yeah. See? i haven't tried it out yet because yeah. I've, I've only driven it to the mountains Ooh, once for let me check really quick i wonder if yours has prepped for co-pilot for your safety uh nope not seeing it so in some of the models you can get um yeah i don't think i got eye the... tracking for blue cruise oh uh, okay yeah, yeah i don't think that was the a higher end option, right? The, right. the last, I think, because this is 401A. I mean, uh, yeah, 401A, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Or the, it's the second of the three tiers, whatever right. that is. B or so it's got I think it's 50, 501A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the middle thing of the lariat. So yeah. what's the price difference between the trucks? Surprisingly, it's not a huge difference. Oh, really? um, well, for me, because mm -hmm. I got lucky because they gave us back the pre sale yeah. <laughs> price, yep. right? The pre um, up price. So this one was uh, 60 before anything, 62 or so. Yep. But the other one, after federal taxes and everything, is like 70. Oh, so, so it's, like it's not, nine. yeah, it's not too crazy Plus different. That's cheaper to drive. Yes, exactly. So you make that up Eventually very easily. Eventually, you'd yes, make it up. Exactly. So, um, where's your head at? It is tough. I, if I'm going to pull a trailer up to the mountains and go on a camping trip, I feel much better in this. I, I just yeah. feel it's more versatile. The back seats are more comfortable for my boys. Like they loved it back there. There's just more room and just kind of Way feels better. Way spacier than the yeah. Rivian. Yeah. And then I can power stuff. And you know, my wife had made some hamburgers, and we were able to nuke them up in the microwave. Yeah. You know, and and then we live in Southern California. If we go to Zion, something like that, it'll get a hundred in the in the summer. Yeah. And you want that AC in the trailer, and I don't want to do the gas generator thing. I'm, I'm sure we're trying to be green. We're trying to help you know the environment and all that. So we we like the idea of the electric car and electric everything and so we're it i really don't want to bring a gas generator and and the noise and everything else right we're going to nature to get away from all that noise. sure so uh for that reason you know there seems to be a little more pluses on this one yeah but i haven't experienced the yet so i can't say you're always good about encouraging people and saying hey it's not that bad there's you know you yeah, don't go need try to, it yeah just go try it so maybe i just need to do one of those trips and see how it goes what if you just sell the model three and <laughs> keep both thought about that that is yeah. oh, that is a, that is a thing that we thought about one of yeah. the problems is both my wife and i work you know and, and uh so we both want to be able to drive electric cars on our commutes. yeah makes sense she's got a you know half an hour commute so yep. she um we saved we, the the model three when we did the math in five or six years uh we saved you know like twenty thousand dollars <laughs> wow. so even though it's more expensive up front you end it ends up being like a twenty to thirty thousand dollar car right. after the you know savings the more expensive gas get the better the economics yes. work on an ev yes, so that poses the question to you viewers what would you do if you were in robert's situation would you keep the f-150 power boost or would you keep the rivian r1t also uh can can we put your email in the description or something how would people reach out to you if they wanted to make an offer on one of these uh, sure yeah we can do something like that and cool. uh yeah, yeah we'll put absolutely. contact info in the description so if you happen to like be dying for a rivian and want to skip the line and spend a bunch of money <laughs> <laughs> that might make robert's decision a little bit easier that's true that's true <laughs> that's the big debate we're having yeah cool well i think it's an interesting solution or situation i should say i don't know what i would do if i were in your shoes i would find a way to keep both of them because <laughs> yeah. that's the, one of the best daily drivers on the planet and this is yeah. just ford gets it i would hold on to this until the lightning comes out or maybe not even Right. because it is nice to have combustion for a long distance trip yeah it would be cool to have like a plug-in hybrid pickup truck with like a 60 mile range or mm. so yeah, yeah that you could then use that battery pack to power everything at the campsite 
Right. And then right. you're not limited by charging infrastructure. And the, and the solar generators or whatever they are, they're getting better, right? We have a Jackery, and, but some of those are getting better and better. And eventually you could, might be able to use those instead of the gas generator for, you know, to supplement the Rivian since it won't give you power. But. Yeah. Well, I'm curious to hear what you guys will say in the description. Thank you so much for, for watching another out of spec reviews video. Subscribe to Robert's channel. It'll be in the description and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Ciao.